Dear students, today I am going to talk about the evaluations of the activities of Human Rights Commission. The establishment of the Human Rights Commission by a Parliamentary Act in India on October 1993 has added an entirely new and additional dimension to the effort of the country for the protection and promotion of human rights. While the court have through formal decisions interpreted the constitution and the law of the land in terms of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and various covenants to which India is a party and they have come to the rescue of victims of human rights. It is envisaged that the National Human Rights Commission would undertake a variety of tasks aimed at promoting a culture of human rights. As a watchdog body, the National Human Rights Commission has so far done a credible job not only promoting human rights in the country, but also in enhancing the image of the nation in the community of states. The initial skepticism that sooner or later the National Human Rights Commission will end up as another governmental type institution with its usual quota of lethargy and indifference has widened as the Commission has successfully maintained its image of objectivity, impartiality and integrity and in fact SEO the role of a model institution that will act as a catalyst in keeping in the executive and the legislative wing of the government to stick to their tax. Indeed, the National Human Rights Commission has become the central focal point for enforcement of the new generation of human rights while protecting the basic social order. And in a given threat perception, the integrity and security of the state. However, it cannot be said that the Commission's achievement have been miraculous or extraordinary in promoting and protecting human rights ethos of the country or that human rights violations have ceased to occur. But one can honestly agree upon the point that it has brought a fresh hope to those who seek redress of their grievances. And there is awareness now, as perhaps never before, of the meaning of human rights in India. The National Human Rights Commission and State Human Rights Commission were constituted following the Protection of Human Rights Act 1993 with an aim to provide access to justice to a number of people who find it difficult and expensive to approach Indian courts. However, despite this mechanism being in place, these commissions have not been able to achieve desirable results and the human rights situation has continued to deteriorate. Most of the violations reported to these commissions are committed by the country's law enforcement agencies and security forces. The commission suffer from a number of handicaps such as a lack of autonomy, politically met appointment, inadequate resources and no independent investigation mechanism, thus making them incapable of effective addressing violations. Over the year, there has been a huge trust deficit between these commissions and the people in general and rights group in particular. The country's image as a vibrant democracy will be at stake if such institutions fail to live up to people's expectations. These commissions play a significant role in evaluating existing safeguards, recommending amendments to strengthen the safeguards, inquiring into violations of rights by the state, and developing human rights literacy amongst the general public. Given the recent record of violations and the state complicity, we felt it was imperative to study this independent quasi-judicial body in each state 
and to evaluate law and international principles of human rights institutions. It is with the backdrop that we conceptualize the plan to engage with these institutions and the lawmakers, government officials, the judiciary and the media to strengthen these commissions, to build and change public opinion, to strengthen civil society's capacity and partner with groups to engage with commissions, and to press for desired amendments to the act through campaigns, lobbying, and advocacy. Since all these institutions at both national and state levels contribute to the promotion and protection of human rights in India, the Paris Principle lay out two primary qualities to be satisfied in the composition of human rights institutions, independence and pluralism. The National Human Rights Commission and the State of Human Rights Commission of India fails on both counts. The NSRC and SHRC in India are currently in a grave state of this area. The hopes of the millions of people who were advocating for these commissions have been turned into despair. Apart from the Constitution for Protection and Observance of Human Rights, enactment of the Protection of Human Rights Act 1993 is an important milestone and it should be welcome. However, it cannot be remarked that it is certainly a weak effort for it suffers from certain defects and shortcomings. In the first place, there can certain ambiguities and impediments concerning the competence and autonomy of the National Human Rights Commissions. In its very first annual report for the period ending on March 31, 1994, the Commission recommended the amendment of Section 29, Clause 1D, and 2, Clause 1B, and 11, Clause 2, together with Section 32, Section 13, Clause 1F, Section 18, 30, 36, so as to remove ambiguities and impediments concerning its competence and autonomy of the Commission. These recommendations were reiterated by the Commission in its annual report for the year 1994 and 95, and the Commission even regretted that action had yet not been taken to give to these recommendations and urged that measures be taken without further delay. Unfortunately, even this has proved insufficient to awaken the government from its slumber. This attitude of the government is not conducive for the proper observance and protection of human rights in the country. The National Human Rights Commission has set up an advisory committee under the chairmanship of former Chief Justice of India, A.M. Ahmadi, to suggest revisions in the Protection of Human Rights Act 1993. The definitions of human rights given in Section 2, Clause D is very narrow. As pointed earlier, it is not proper to limit the human rights only in the rights relating to life, liberty, equality, and dignity of the individual, even though they are the most important basic human rights. A serious defect of the Act is that establishment of State Human Rights Commission has not been made mandatory. Section 21, Clause 1, which provides for the establishment of State Human Rights Commission, uses the word may constitute. This defect ought to be rectified as soon as possible. It is probably because of this inter alia only a few states have so far or established state human rights commissions. This provision should be mandatory in the same way as Section 3 of the Act, which makes it mandatory for the central government to constitute National Human Rights Commission. Jurisdictions of the Human Rights Court has not been specified in the Act. It is not clear what cases will be conducted in such court and what procedures shall be followed 
in such court. It has been criticized and rightly too that the National Human Rights Commission has noted, though it has been interested with the important task of ensuring observance of human rights. The powers conferred on it are not sufficient. It has no power to take a binding decision. It can only recommend it. Even though it concludes that violations of human rights has taken place, but instead of giving a binding decision, it may under section 18 simply recommend to the concerned government or authority for the initiation of proceedings for prosecution or other action or approach the Supreme Court or High Court concern for such directions, order or writs as that court may deem necessarily recommended or the concerned government or authority for grant of some interim relief to the victim or the family. The concerned government or the authority is not bound to accept the recommendation or may accept the recommendation with certain modification as it may deem fit. If the government is really serious and sincere about the observance of human rights, it should give some teeth to National Human Rights Commission so as to make it an effective and a useful body. National Human Rights Commission has no independent and a separate investigating agency and has to utilize and rely upon the service of any officer or investigation agency of the central government or of the state government with the concurrence of the central government or the state government as the case may be. It is not proper and just to specify a sessions court as human rights court because this court are already overburdened with large number of cases. Therefore, cases of alleged violations of human rights will not receive in such court the priority and importance they deserve nor their expeditious disposal can be ensured in such courts. Separate human rights court under the Protection of Human Rights Act 1993 ought to be established to achieve the DJ result. <laughs>